All right, what's up everybody? I wanted to do a little uh, discussion video. I want to talk about some big news that happened. They're about the Microsoft acquiring Activision deal. I don't know when I'm going to upload this, but as of recording, it happened today. So I just want to do a little discussion, quick discussion, and give some thoughts on it. I'm sure I don't need to go over the story much. You probably already know it. Microsoft has announced that they are acquiring, they're in the works to acquire uh, Activision Blizzard. So it's not just Activision, it's Act Activision Blizzard, because Activision owns Blizzard. Activision make, you know, Call of Duty, Tony Hawk type of games, Crash Bandicoot, which is ironic since the studio that owns Crash Bandicoot. Soon Microsoft will own Crash Bandicoot, technically. Blizzard, obviously World of Warcraft, Overwatch, Starcraft, big games like that. So important to note, one, they don't own Activision yet. A lot of people are just like, oh, Microsoft owns Activision. They don't own them, they just announced that they're in the process of acquiring them. So technically, uh, the CEO of Activision stated that he expects the deal, to, the deal to close by the end of Microsoft's fiscal year, 2023 fiscal year, which is gonna be in June, uh, by the end of June. So they, he expects the deal to happen around then. So until that time, Activision is still completely independent, separate company from Microsoft. Microsoft has no ownership over them. And the, there's, you know, stuff can happen between then. So I'm sure Microsoft will get examined for Monopoly. Uh, do I think they'll get flagged for Monopoly? I don't think so at all. I'm sure they'll be able to do the purchase no problem. Cause I just don't think they, even though they own a lot of the market now, big names in the market now, I don't think they own enough of the market. There's still enough of the market separate from them that they don't own that would cause it not to be a Monopoly. Not that I don't know much about legal stuff, obviously. I'm not gonna claim that I do, but that's just my opinion. Also, if you look at like, the Disney Fox merger. I mean, the fact that Disney was able to buy Fox, which is a lot more, feels a lot more like Monopoly than this, um, and that went went through. I just leads me to believe that this will probably happen, no problem. But other things that can fall out can technically happen in the meantime until contracts are signed and finalized. You know, it's backouts are possible if, if that something goes wrong. I mean, I again, I don't think anything will. I'm sure this will probably happen, but it is important to note that it hasn't happened and it's not gonna happen for probably like six months. I do wanna point out my obvious, my Sony bias. I'm a PlayStation fanboy. Born and raised till the day I die. Loud and proud. But I do own an Xbox. I have to hide the Halo Xbox box on the channel. I just did a Forza Horizon controller unboxing. I don't know if it's uploaded yet or not. Um, and I, I like Xbox, so this doesn't like necessarily hurt me at all, really, because I'm gonna, if this deal goes through and Call of Duty and Overwatch and all those games become Xbox exclusive. I'm still gonna be able to play them um, So it doesn't actually hurt me. So I don't have that kind of like personal vendetta against this deal um, I do think the deal is bad though I don't think it's a good deal and not as in bad for Microsoft It's obviously a great purchase for, for Microsoft like, They'll make they, they spent close to 70 million not billion. I'm sorry close to 70 billion on this But I'm sure they'll probably very easily make that back off of Activision considering that it was also just announced that Call of Duty is the biggest gaming franchise of the year for the 13th year in a row, even though it feels like that franchise could possibly be dying every year. Someone's like, oh, this is Call of Duty slowly dying. It's still somehow the biggest franchise every year for 13 years now. So this is obviously a smart move on their end. I don't think it's a great, it's not a move that I don't think should be celebrated by gamers in general. And I mean, from both Sony and Xbox point of view. And of course, my Sony bias. You see it, you understand it, you know it, right? I love drinking from Shu's juices. You know, Shuhei Yoshida, I love drinking his juices straight from his cup, you know? Because I love, I love Sony. But, and so I, I, with that perspective, if this happened in reverse where Sony bought Activision Blizzard, my first reaction, of course, would be like, fuck yeah, hell yeah, Sony. Fuck you, Microsoft, this is awesome. Call of Duty in the Sony stable, yada yada. That would be my first initial gut reaction. Upon further thought, I know I wouldn't actually be happy about it because here's what this really probably means. Is that Microsoft has no need to be original with anything they do from here on out. They have no need to make their own games, make their own studios, do anything new and innovative. All they need to do is just I keep releasing Call of Duties and Elder Scrolls and Fallouts and Dooms and all those franchises. And obviously those studios are gonna make some new games too, like 
uh, Starfield, but they don't have to come up with any, they don't have to create new studios that try to come up with new and innovative ideas and games that are super creative so they can compete and unique so they can compete with the likes of Call of Duty and Elder Scrolls and everything and offer something new to the gamers. All they had to do is just buy Call of Duty and Elder Scrolls and they'll just have those as their selling point. Which is a bummer because I mean I love new experiences, I love new and creative and innovative games and this is just an excuse for further, further excuse for Microsoft not to do that because they don't have to. Because that's not going to make them money. What's going to make them money is Call of Duty and Elder Scrolls and whatnot. Because when I think about like my favorite period of Sony, it's the PlayStation 3 era. And what was so great about the PlayStation 3 era was that Sony was losing in the beginning, which forced them to have to be creative and innovative and do cool things. This, the games Sony released on the PlayStation 3 era were no doubt to me some of their best games. Um, and I know they, they you know, now is where they get the most critical acclaim. They have the Glass Bus and the God of Wars and the Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawns and stuff. They get the tens out of tens. But they're all also like the same. They just keep making the same game over and over again now. I don't know if anybody's noticed that, but even as a Sony fanboy, I can tell you they just keep, I played all these games. I play all these games and I really enjoy a lot of them. God of War is great. Days Gone is awesome. Horizon's pretty good, not as good as people say it is. Last of Us Part 2 sucked, but the first one was really good. Spider Man's great. Uh. Ghost of Tsushima's amazing, but they're all almost the exact same game, just like reprinted over and over again with like new characters and stories and it's like new gameplay mechanics. They just make third person action adventure games, either narrative, linear narrative or open world. Those are your two, those are the two options. Either get, you're getting a third person action adventure game, you either just get another open world one or a linear one and we probably get a dozen of each a year kind of thing. But that's an exaggeration obviously. But that's all we get from Sony. Cause they don't need to, to make anything else because they don't need to make a first person shooter because they have Call of Duty. It's like they're, they're the number one platform for Call of Duty. They don't need to make a car racer. They can just have a, someone else's racing game on there. They just, just have fucking uh, what it, Project Cars. They don't need a racing uh, They have a Forza. I mean, they have Grand Forza coming out. But they don't need a car racer because car racers are, are a niche genre that isn't going to get played by a lot of people anyways. And they're, they're here for the big bucks now. You know, leave it to Mario Kart. They don't need cool arcadey twin stick shooters to sell you their platform because they don't need to sell you their platform. You're already buying their platform and playing it for Call of Duty and FIFA and everything. It's the number one platform for all those games and it's just the number one platform in general. So they don't need to make cool, interesting new games to try to get you to come to their side because we're already, most people are already on their side. Back in the PS3 day, if that wasn't the case, you need to win people over. And I'm not saying this is the exact reason all those games came out on the PS3. It was all such a different period of gaming. Uh, games more interesting, unique, diverse types of games and genres and more creative stuff. I think it was more in in at the time. I think people, gamers are more into that. I mean, you got a lot of that on the PS2 and stuff too. Nowadays, people just want to play the same game. They find one game that they like and they just want to play that over and over again for a hundred million hours. So they just, people aren't interested in different unique experiences anymore or as much as they used to be, if it seems like at least. So that's part of the reason too, but also part of it, I, I believe is the fact that they just have to create new experiences to try to win people over to their side of the fence. And you can see that they, ever since they they won the console war, they won the console wars, they just, their games have gotten less creative, less innovative, less interesting, diverse. They used to have first person shooters at Killzone. You play on PS3, you can play Killzone. You can play Fat Princess. You can play Dead Nation. You can play Heavy Rain. You can play Twisted Metal, Mod Nation Racers, Little Bleak Planet. All these games are completely different genres, very different ideas, very unique and creative from one another. And they're unique and creative from other games of like them in the industry. You know, Killzone is very different from Call of Duty, and that's what I, that's one of the things I love about Killzone. I love Killzone; it's one of my favorites. Or Resistance, or anything like that. You know, they needed to compete with Call of Duty. Call of Duty was primarily played on Xbox, and Xbox had Halo. And they needed their own thing, so they had Resistance and they had Killzone and some of my favorite games PlayStation that has ever released. They don't need those anymore. So this is coming up, becoming a long Sony ramp, but to dial it back to Microsoft. The reason, one of the main reasons Sony had those kind of games back then was because they needed them to compete. Microsoft doesn't need to do anything new or innovative to compete in this space anymore because they just buy anything that's good and that becomes theirs. They just use that big old Microsoft bunny 
from probably that they mostly make on other stuff that's not gaming since Microsoft's such a huge organization. And while it seems cool, you just have to think about it even from an Xbox fan's point of, point of view. Like if I was an Xbox fan, I'd be like, cool at first, but I'm like, all right, so I'm, I'm never getting anything interesting from Microsoft. I'm just getting Call of Duty. It's games I've already been getting for years. That's what Microsoft is gonna be giving me as my exclusives. Microsoft could put that 70 billion into making new studios and use that money to fund those studios to make really cool new and interesting games that we've never seen before that are competing with the likes of Call of Duty and, and everything and just innovating the space creatively with games and stuff. But instead we're just they're, they're not gonna do that. Just use that money to buy games that already exist and keep them exclusively on their platform and that's kind of their angle and I just don't think that's great. One obviously is bad for gamers. I, I, I wanna, uh, people say it's bad for gamers when things go exclusive. People have been making that argument for years, even with like, uh, you know, brain. Where are you? <laughs> All right, shoot. Give me that. Give me your juicy liquids. Fuel my brain. Shoo. Um. I don't even remember what I was saying, dude. It's been a long fucking day. Where, what are we doing? Why are we, why are we here? What am I saying? What are we doing? What is this about? <laughs> um. So, I mean, that's all Xbox fans are getting as exclusives from here on out. You're not going to get anything new or cool or interesting. You're just going to get the same games you've been able to play, but now you just... Now no one else can play them. That's the only thing that's changed for you. Is that it's nothing actually? Nothing's changed for you. It's everything. Some cha things change for everybody else, but for you, I mean, now you can play them on Games Pass, which is cool. So you don't have to pay for them, or you don't have to pay extra for them, which is which is a cool bonus if you're the Games Pass kind of gamer. But you know, you're also losing. Yeah, financially, you're doing pretty good on that end, but you're also losing out on any cool or creative new experiences in gaming. So if you're the kind of person who truly loves gaming and cares more about games than money then you're kind of losing out on on that so i'm actually kind of happy as a sony fan because the only thing i positive i could take from this and this is not guaranteed this will happen but it, it's like it's something i think could happen and it would be an awesome takeaway from this is sony losing call of duty elder scrolls and that's not to say we know that they're they're losing those games we kind of have soft confirmed that they're losing elder scrolls um, but Microsoft's too fucking chicken shit to come out and just say it. Uh, and we don't know that they're going to lose Call of Duty. We don't know that Microsoft's going to do that or not yet. That would be a lot of money to pass up on. So they might make Call of Duty exclusive. We don't know. But losing these games might force Sony to have to be a little more creative again and stop releasing just fucking third-person action-adventure games. And maybe we'll finally get Killzone or Resistance or something even new, maybe, back or if we get one of those back or we get something new, a uh, new first person shooter from Sony because they need to compete with Call of Duty now. They actually have like a reason to like innovate and be creative for once. So yeah, and that's not the shit on Sony too much. They, they have been doing an okay job. We did get like a Sackboy this year on PS5. Return was kind of, you know, was technically a third person action adventure game. It was a little, a little more unique. And we're getting a Gran Turismo this year. But my general point stays. I think that's, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> I don't know what else I have to say. Man, that, was a ramble, that was a longer ramble than I thought, but yeah, I think... Oh. Mm. Stop right there, kids. If you remember, people complain about exclusives not being good for gamers. Even since you know, when Call of Duty had exclusive content on Xbox, or then on PlayStation, and other games like Spider-Man from Marvel Avengers, only being on PlayStation and stuff. Well, in that case, I don't think it's that big of a deal. People make that, I think people make that a bigger deal. People are like, oh, I never support this because it's terrible for gamers. Um, and it kind of is. Um, but it's also like, cool. I think it's cool to have exclusive content on platforms. I think it makes, you know, the platform holders feel more special because it's small stuff. It's like, okay, I have to, I have to wait a month for the maps. It sucks. But it's also nice to be the person that gets maps a month early or you know you miss one character out of uh, dozens of characters it sucks for sure but it's nice to have the, the extra 
the exclusivity it makes your platform feel a little more special but it's smaller stuff because it's just a character or it's just delayed maps or a delayed mode it's like a small mode too not like a big mode you know it's little things like that so it's not really that big of a deal to me completely different ones an entire fucking game or entire franchise that uh, a lot of people make an argument is very anti-gamer i do agree with that even though again i don't strongly feel like angry about it. i'm like how could you this is so anti-gamer i hate microsoft i don't hate microsoft i think it's fine i think it's probably a smart business move and again i own xbox so it just doesn't hurt me at all you know people make that as an argument for why people microsoft fans shouldn't be happy about this i don't think that's why i think if that's the only argument that's kind of stupid you should so you probably would still be happy about this because you know cool you got exclusives i mean fuck for everybody else who cares about them <laughs> but what you should be upset about is that you're just not going to get anything interesting anymore like that's it like microsoft's not going to try to make anything cool or interesting the days of gears and halos and i don't know whatever i mean microsoft's never been really known for exclusive interesting exclusives beyond like years and halo and stuff but we're even probably even get less of that because they have no reason to make new ips or do anything new anymore they just have they don't there's no reason so you're not getting them if you're a microsoft person and i think that sucks i think that's the reason you should be upset that's the reason i would be upset personally i mean that's the reason i am upset i think it's i think these things should be left as third parties and i think microsoft and sony should be doing their their due diligence to create new and innovative experiences to compete with those third parties and each other rather than just buy the third parties and do nothing themselves and gaming becomes kind of boring and stale that's my rant it's over so sony fans ran on a microsoft and uh beginning to acquire activision slash blizzard um yeah so let me know what you think in the comments this is a big big discussion so i'm sure there's probably people have lots of things to say be nice, be cool. Let me know what you think. Share your opinion. Like I shared mine. Um, love to talk about it in the comments. Let me know if you agree or not. You know, well, since I was rambling about it, let me know what your favorite era of Sony was. And fuck it, let me know what your favorite era of Microsoft was if you have a favorite. Yeah, because I love the PS3 era. And I hope I hope we get something like that back. Like this video if you like the video. If you agree with me or even if you don't, just like the video. Be a cool dude. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm, a lot, I'm in a lot. My brain's broken. Subscribe for other videos. I got a lot of cool unboxings on the video. On the video, Got a lot of cool unboxings on the channel. So, you know, take a look at those. Got some gameplay stuff. I want to do some gameplay stuff soon. So subscribe if you want to watch that or more stuff like this. And yeah, go play some video games. Have fun. Enjoy your, enjoy yourself. Have a good day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Ran over. Cheers.